Hi, welcome back to this mini video series where I help you uh, build a financial spreadsheet from scratch. If you haven't done so already, please go back and uh, watch the first uh, uh, video in the series and progress from there. In this video, I'm going to be adding um, to the scenario analysis a broader range of allocations. This is important because it gives us a much better idea of how our asset allocation between debt and equity will impact the range of outcomes we can expect um, in retirement or whatever we're using the spreadsheet for. Uh, my name is Lars Croyer. I'm a uh, former hedge fund manager who's written a couple of books about finance, and I'm now doing these videos as a hobby. Uh, I'm not a financial advisor, so please do your own work uh, before you do anything I say in this or any other video. Um, but let's get back to the spreadsheet. So here we are back at the spreadsheet. Um, and like before, the first thing I want to do is I want to um, create a copy such that each sheet is um, the, um, a standalone thing for each video. And let's say adding allocation. Um, okay, so what I want to do here is I want to create this same output um, but for a range of allocations between in this case the minimum risk asset and and equity so let's move this out to the right a little bit just to create some room and then maybe move this down to the bottom here so we can see and so what i want to do is i want to change the data table uh, so this is by the way the one i should i forgot i mentioned in the last video and then i forgot to change it but um but, uh, but here we are, so now I'm going to delete it. So let's try to get it right this time. Move this out here. And then instead, I want to make the data table um, such that we have a couple of different allocations. So let's do the first one be 50%. Let's do one where the minimum risk asset is 100, one where it's 75. We already have the 50, 25, and 0. So the last case is the all equities case. And now we do the data table like this. And now we go data, table, and now the row input cell. Um, this, by the way, interesting. I always manage to do this the wrong way around. Um, and then the column input cell is this. That's the one we got wrong before. So let's recalculate. Um, let's see. Now it's interesting that. The, the longer uh, we keep going in the spreadsheet, the the more um, the bigger the model will be, and the longer it'll take to recalculate. At some point, we should actually probably um, split this spreadsheet into multiple uh, uh, spreadsheets just to avoid it. So I'm just going to reformat it. So there you have it. So now it looks very neat. You see that when in the in the column D, it's all there's no risk. So we um, the number will be the same every time. Let's copy out the mean, median, min, and max. And sure enough, you mean you see that the numbers get crazy sometimes. But um, this is, for example, when you look at the, the the max column, this is the best case out of a thousand. The min column is the worst case out of a thousand. So very very unlikely. The median is is basically what we would expect. So this is basically saying well how well do you expect to do if you um if 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 you were the median luckiest person um one thing i actually find quite instructive that i want to add is um you know it's not very helpful to say well i want to manage my assets such that i am the that i'm not the thousand least lucky person but i think it's quite helpful to perhaps do the 20th so the fifth percentile to say what if I don't want to be um, the unlucky 20th person? Uh, 20th uh, person, how how badly would I do? And the formula for that is the percentile. Tile, uh, ink. That's funny. I never use these formulas in my daily life. So this is some of some of this is actually pretty tricky for me. And then we do this percent here. I think that's right. Um, yes. So. Now, with this number, and let's copy this out. This is basically saying if you are the unluckiest 20, 20th person, the unluckiest 5%, then how how would you do? Um, let's make this a formula so we can text 
this um, comma zero um, and uh, percentile zero percent. Ah, oh, that's because we have to multiply it by a hundred. Because there you go, fifth percentile. So this is the answer, right? So now it shows if we make this the tenth percentile, or everything will follow. Fifteenth percentile. So basically, you say I want to be the how do I do if I'm the unluckiest fifth person? And you see the numbers go up all the time. If um, if I'm the unluckiest tenth, it's 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 worse. If I'm the unluckiest twentieth people or the fifth percentile, it's even worse. Another way that I think is is quite instructive is to say, what if um, I want to know in the number of cases that are above zero? So let's say above zero. This is again bit of a funny formula. So then we do the count if, and then again we do the range of all these thousand cases, and then we do the condition, which is that. And now we have the count. Um, and if we want to do that, let's see, let's make the b a constant and copy that as. So now we counted the number of cases where um, that this is above uh, this is above zero, which we see that it is in all, in most of the cases. In fact, we can see the minimum. There are relatively few uh, <clears throat> cases where this is below zero. We can make this as a percentage uh, simply by dividing it by a thousand, which is the number of cases we have. Um, let's make this a percent. Percent. So there we go. So copy that out. Um, and then again, let's make. Uh, so this is now text B. Um, uh, then let's take this cases. Uh, what's that percent? Cases. Um, and then we don't need any of this stuff. We need the text and text B117, which it is. Um, uh, this. Sorry, this is all a little, little uh, sort of, um, little tech nerdy stuff formatting. I'm just trying to get this. Yeah, there you go. So cases um, above zero uh, is is there for uh, percentage cases above zero. And if we uh, copy this down and make it above, say, uh, uh, four, five hundred, a thousand. Let's say. Um, we see the numbers change. Actually, we should now, if you notice, they copy down the cells. Um, it's no longer C110 to C1109 because we copied it down. So it's, we should make that to 09. It's not going to make a big difference. Um, so there you go. So now we have cases above um, zero, cases above 500,000. We see there are far fewer cases above 500,000 depending on our allocations, which we see up here. Um, and this is pretty neat because now we've actually we've shown a lot of data with these simple changes, and I think this is uh, the kind of stuff I think we should have up at the. Um, I think we should have this up at the top because this is really the the, the core, the core of the model. This is really this is this is where I I, I think this is really cool stuff, <laughs> in in all modesty or not. Um, uh, let's make this uh, so there we go. you can obviously make oh this should be a percent uh, so there you go so now we have so you can see serial output and then we say add various minimum risk asset allocation and then we copy this and format that across like that, and then we copy this down. And here you have it. So this this is really, I think this is uh, this is the summary of, of the model so far. So maybe we shade this in a neat um, recognizable color. Um, and here you have it. So now we've added scenario. Uh, uh, if you want to see different numbers, you simply change the numbers down here. Let's say, well, this is just too risky. Let's see what it was like with the 10%. By the way, don't forget to recalculate. Um, 
because we, we the reason we don't recalculate um, at every at every point is because the numbers uh, th there are so many computations in here. I think you have uh, a thousand cases of a standard deviation being rerun. Then you rerun that a thousand uh, cases times each each uh, allocation, and then you have all the other assumptions. It's a lot of computational power required for the computers. Maybe I have a slow computer. I don't know, but but I think in any case. Uh, this is worth doing, but here you have it. This is really this is really a neat summary, given all of these assumptions, where where you would be at for for um, for the output given the different minimum risk asset allocations, and subsequently uh, the rest is equity. So equity would be one minus these numbers. So this this column here would be all equities. Um, so um, so there you have it. So thanks for watching. I hope you found that interesting. Uh, and useful. Uh, you can subscribe to my channel if you want to hear about future videos, um, but hopefully I'll see you back here as the series progress.